Welcome back to Stories for the Isolated and Socially Quarantined, or as we are more commonly known as SICK. As you know, these readings are brought to you by Uncle Frank's Book Emporium and Farm Implement Store in the village of Oakwood. In the village, our men are tall and affable. They drink single malt scotch and smoke fine cigars. Our women are strong and handsome. They have firm legs and good teeth, and all the children are grown and away in the merchant marines. The sick office is located at the intersection of prosperity and abundance across the street from the office of Dr. Julius Jenkins, practitioner of homeopathic medicine and faith healing. We regret to inform you, but we had to drop the diaper for worm society. It seems they were infusing the soil with Pepto-Bismol. However, we are pleased to announce we found a new, a new sponsor. It's Cousin Zach's General Store, Othal's Consultant, and Teeth Cleaning. Zach wants to remind you he carries a full line of groceries and sun trees, as well as handling the overflow of your outhouse while handling your dental needs. And of course, we have our mainstay. Mama Maybell's Orange Bunny Nail Salon, Bait Shop, and Palm Reader. Big Mama believes we are reincarnated as bunnies and the color orange holds spiritual powers. So Big Mama captures little bunnies, paints their nails orange, and releases them back into the wild to wait the transformation. And where you can still buy worms, but without diapers. We have talked to Big Mama, and she still would not guarantee the accuracy of a palm reading or offer refunds. She still insists that it ain't her fault you die before the reading comes true. When last we met, I promised I'd tell you a story about my cousin Jesse, who was better known as Cotton. So tonight's story from the book is titled Cotton's Library. Cotton did not get his nickname because of his ability to pick cotton. Remember, this is coal and shine country. Or for his fondness for cotton candy. Cotton was so named because of the ever-present streaks of yellow, greenish snot running from each nostril. As I remember him, Cotton was a rather colorful individual. I mean, literally. His skin tone was what people back then called high yellow. His hair was sandy color, but would turn sort of reddish blonde from the summer sun. His eyes were hazel in color, and his teeth the color of tarnished grass. And of course, there was the ever-present snot to add to the palette of color. Like most children of the camp, Cotton could usually be found wearing a plain white cotton t-shirt, denim is, cotton overalls, never and running around wiped his nose foot. on his sleeve, or used any type of cloth. Cotton would use his tongue to remove the excess. I imagine if the folks at Kleenex had known about Cotton, they would have had him assassinated. Cotton, like most residents of Black Mountain, was multi-talented. Cotton had the ability to open RC cola bottles with his teeth. Cotton would buy an 8-ounce RC and empty the bottle in two gulps. Having this reputation, it was rare when Cotton got to share a bottle of pop with another kid. Besides, if you did share it with Cotton, you always made sure he was last on the bottle. Who would want it back, even if there were anything left in the bottle? Life at a coal mining camp back then required any child to have a vivid imagination to keep active and amused. There were no playgrounds. No one had a television. Therefore, Cotton would spend his time looking for various activities to keep amused. Fact is, many of Cotton's activities were dangerous and yet did not appear to be a major concern to most adults. Cotton could often be found hanging from the bottom of a narrow footbridge, which crossed a fast-moving creek on the outskirts of the camp. Like most boys his age, Cotton would hunt snakes and other critters that didn't take kindly to people trying to catch them. Now I must tell you, even the ever-present snot and his ability to gulp down 16 ounces of RC Cola in four breaths is not what put Cotton in Black Mountain's Hall of Fame. No, Cotton is in the Black Mountain Hall of Fame due to his legendary consumption of another product. Let me begin by stating I am not an expert on constipation or laxatives. I have no knowledge of how or why laxatives work. 
All I know is when you take a laxative, you don't go shopping at the mall or take long car rides in the country. Of all the laxatives on the market, I would hazard to guess one laxative in particular has been the curse of many a juvenile. No, I am not talking about castor oil or milk of magnesia. I am talking about a laxative far more sinister, far more despicable. I am talking about a laxative that is disguised as candy. I am referring to X-Lax. Unwrap a packet of X-Lax and you are holding in your hand what would look like to any child a piece of chocolate. The listeners should remember this event took place in a small rural community during the Depression. Therefore, we're talking about a place and period in time where there were no recreational centers or places for children to congregate and avoid getting into trouble. In other words, in small rural towns, children were forced to be creative and relied on their imagination. The opposite end of the spectrum is we now have kids born in the electronic age who are turning into an army of ambidextrous zombies. Of course, the following event is an excellent example of what can happen when a child does not have a television to numb his brain. Here are the irrefutable facts of the heinous event. 1. X-Lax was introduced to Black Mountain as samples via the United States Postal Service. 2. The postman went from mailbox to mailbox leaving a free sample of X-Lax. 3. Each sample consisted of two doses of what would appear to a child as two pieces of chocolate. 4. Cotton and his sister Odetta followed the postman for approximately two-tenths of a mile, removing and eating several X-Lax samples. 5. You should never put your complete trust in a man wearing a uniform. 6. Bad things happen to people who steal the mail. 7. Cotton and Odetta never ate chocolate again. 8. Cotton and Odetta's bowels remain regular for the rest of their lives. 9. The satisfaction received from greed is fleeting. 10. Nothing exceeds like x lax And 11. Creativity is a moving experience. One benefit to Cotton's consumption of x lax is he became a prolific reader. Cotton took to spending hours in the outhouse reading westerns and suspense novels. Of course, one drawback to Cotton spending so much time in the outhouse was getting him to come out so others could use it. This was particularly a problem for anyone who had eaten one of Granddaddy Scott's chili dogs. It was, after eating one of his chili dogs, you did not need a light in the outhouse at night. At night, you could always tell when someone had eaten one of Granddaddy's chili dogs. The outhouse was sort of glow. At any rate, Cotton spent so much time in the outhouse, people took to calling it the Cotton Library or Cotton's Reading Room.